Hey, this is Russ. Time to talk e-bikes. Yeah, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays are e-bikes. Mondays, we talk about whatever we want to talk about. However, I did put a bonus video yesterday. Yeah, so if you missed Wednesday's video, yeah, I went out to uh, get a uh, lettuce-wrapped burger. <laughs> yeah, check that out if you haven't seen that. So, uh, anyway, <laughs> how's the weather today? Well, as you can see, we're still stuck inside. Yeah, we got snow. <laughs> we got snow going on right now. Yeah, we can't catch a break. Um, the weather keeps getting weirder. But, um, you know, it, you know it's, uh, it is what it is. All right, the snow is snow flurries, meaning it's very, very light. It probably will never stay and stick. But, yeah, but there's still snow. <laughs> All right. So we're stuck inside. So what are we gonna talk about today? Well, um, somebody mentioned uh, that they had watched one of my older videos um, and he, he said it's uh, surprising how your opinion has changed since that video. Yeah, <laughs> it has, it has. I think that was the 2,500 mile video that he watched. That was when I was still riding the Rad Power Bikes Rad Rover 5. That was the first bike I ever got. I actually bought that bike. That's what started the whole thing, okay? And at that time, I had put on about 2,500 miles on the first year. Yeah, actually, I ended up at 2,600 and something miles that first year. And uh, I think I mentioned that, that I didn't watch it again, but try and go by memory. I think I, think I mentioned that I, um, I was happy with the bike and that uh, would I be upgrading to some other brand like a Hemiway or some other brand and I said no I, I'm, I'm perfectly happy with what I have and I'm fine and he says well it's, it's surprising how your opinion has changed that's true <laughs> that's true here's the thing you know when you first get your first bike and that's all the experience you have on an e-bike is that one bike and if it seems to be doing well for you uh, there's no reason to change it right so because you don't know any better, uh, that's what you feel is, is correct. Yeah, and that's, that's how I've always thought about it for e-bikes for brand new riders. You know, if you don't have anything else to compare it against, it's perfectly fine for you, unless you find something wrong with it, right? Like uh, it's your first bike, you buy it, you, you ride it, and you kind of say, oh, some, something's not quite right with this thing, you know? Then you start looking for other things. But if everything else seems fine for you, uh, your, uh, your opinion of that bike is, it, it is perfectly okay. I can't, can't see why anyone would want to make a change. So obviously things have changed over that time. I did get other bikes come in and I tried other bikes. And then I started to see, okay, now I understand why people like this. And now I understand why people like that. <laughs> So um, here's, let me, let me talk real quickly about that very first bike, okay? I bought that bike because I was trying to fix my knees, as you know. That was the whole reason I got into this whole e-bike thing in the first place. I had the knee replacement done, and, and uh, it took me two solid years to get to the point where I could even ride a bike. And I wasn't even riding that great, as you know. I fell a couple of times, and it's because my bike leaned to the side where my weakened leg and my replaced knee was. I didn't have the leg strength to hold me and the bike up and down I went. <laughs> all right? It had nothing to do with my ability or inability to ride a bike, but it was all about leg strength that wasn't there. And that's what I learned at that point that, you know, if you have something like a, a knee replacement or a hip replacement, don't get on that bike unless you feel you have enough strength to hold you and the bike up when it leans towards one side. Otherwise, you're going to go down too, all right? So, um, Anyways, that very first bike I got, I chose the Rad Rover 5 because at that time, Rad Power Bikes was probably the, the well, I don't know if they still are, but they were probably the leader in e-bikes in the United States at the time. And so uh, that particular bike was one of the most popular bikes that you can get. And I recall that um, it was a waiting list just to get those bikes. So when my wife finally said that it was okay for me to get a bike, I immediately went on the website to see if any were available. And sure enough, they had some in stock. So I immediately placed the order and I got it the very next week. So um, thinking back about the Rad Rover 5, which was a very good bike for me, um, it did 20 miles per hour. It was a class two bike, uh, but you could unlock it to do about 25 miles an hour. And that's exactly what I did. 
Now, when I first started riding that very first bike, going even 15 miles an hour felt really fast to me, okay? <laughs> I remember going down the street and go, wow, why would anyone want to go faster than this? But as you know, over time, I've uh, increased my speed. Yeah, there's times that I, I would say on average, I ride between 20 and 22 miles per hour. I mean, you can watch the speedometer and stuff. You'll see, yeah, Russ is moving pretty fast, right? On the street, I'm not talking down to bike paths. I try my best to stay within uh, the 15 miles per hour. But as we know, I jump between 15 and 18 typically on the bike path. It's very hard to kind of keep it in a certain range when you're used to moving pretty quick. So. Anyway, uh, I'm riding this bike and I'm thinking, it's got everything I need. I mean, it, it, it moves very quickly. It's a big bike. Um, I've got decent range, not perfect. I think I was getting 20 to 22 miles out of that. And I was thinking, yeah, I don't see why I would need anything else. Now, the one thing I did do is I did upgrade the, the, um, the battery on that bike. I changed the battery to a unit pack power battery. Now that battery has gone through a lot of uh, negativity uh, lately because people said, oh, it catches fire. You should watch this video from this one guy. And um, here's the thing with, the, with that battery, okay? When I was looking to get a secondary battery for that bike, it was, um, what was it? By the time you paid for the cost of the battery, the shipping was $65. You paid the tax on it. Everything came out to about $700 total for that second battery. I says, no way am I going to spend $700 on a battery. So uh, I started looking around, and I found the unit pack power batteries. Uh, sold it on Amazon. I think I paid something like $300 and... 350 something 380 something something like that that's a lot less than 700 right it's a triangle battery so i says i'm gonna get this thing and i'm gonna take the battery off of the uh of the rad power bike and stick the battery in, a, in the triangle of the of the bike because it was a step over bike right just fits perfectly in there and i did it yeah i i actually watched another video from another uh youtuber and uh, he had made the change too, so we had to change a little bit of wiring to get it to work. But no problem, you know, I, I know how to solder. <laughs> so I, uh, I put that on there. Then as I thought more about it, I said, I'm going to buy a second battery. I'm going to stick one on the rear rack. <laughs> and then I'm going to put an extension cable on there so that I can actually uh, use one battery up. And when that battery's done, I'll just unwire it and wire up the other battery that's sitting on the rear rack. And that's what I did. And because of that battery, I was able to go as far as um, the Botanic Gardens in Chicago. Uh, I live in the northwest suburbs. And so um, the ride there and back is about 66 miles, all right? So if it wasn't for that battery, which was a 20-amp-hour battery, a 52-volt 20-amp-hour battery, I would have never been able to go distance. That's when I started to realize I like going farther. <laughs> I like going with a purpose to go somewhere because of that. Now that battery's had some some negative things. In fact, I think I think in uh, in the UK, I think they said they banned it and I don't even know if it's still offered on Amazon. I haven't checked it in a while. But because of the negativity, you know, people aren't buying it now. But it was a good battery for for what it was and uh, I only had one issue with one battery that had I think a bad BMS, which is a battery management system. It's a board that's in the battery. And Unipack Power sent me the board and um, made me do the upgrade, which I thought was weird that they would ask you to open up their battery to make the upgrade. But they have no other way of fixing it because they're out in China. And uh, they sent me the wrong board <laughs> on the first one. Then they sent me a second one, and that board didn't work. So eventually they just said, look, I, I told them, I said, look, it's not going to work. Um, I've, I've done it several times now. It's, you know, it's not working. So they sent me a totally brand new battery. Yeah, uh, And then the old one, um, they didn't take back. They just said, toss it, do whatever you want to do with it, right? So I still have that battery still sitting in the basement. <laughs> so the battery itself was fine. It was just the board was no good. So the battery continued to work, and I used it for a while. I eventually sold the, uh, the Rad Rover 5 with the two batteries. Yeah, so hopefully that gentleman is doing well with it. But it was a 52-volt battery, um, and Rad's bike was a 48 volt system now i wasn't sure whether that was good or bad or whether 
the electronics was going to be fried because of this battery. And I had heard from other people who had done it, said that it was perfectly fine. So I took the chance and I bought a 52 volt battery. So um, did it give it a little bit more power? Just a touch, but barely noticeable, but it was a little bit more. And um, but the whole point was it was a 20 amp hour battery. I think the, the red only had 14 amp hours back then. Uh, 14 amp hour was kind of the norm. And that's what most bikes came with. Now we're doing 20 and a lot of the new bikes today are around 20. So things have changed quite a bit. And so my opinion changed too. Over time, I started taking in other bikes and I was reviewing the bikes and I started to realize, yeah, maybe that bike doesn't have everything I want. Maybe, maybe I like a folding bike. Maybe I like, uh, you know, a step through bike. There was, there's aspects that uh, I didn't know would be nice to have. And then of course, after getting the new bikes in, I started to change my opinion. So interestingly though, sometimes people watch these old videos, you know, they kind of run into it, either YouTube suggests it, or somehow they, they end up seeing it. And they think that's the only thing that I've ever ridden, or that's, that's my opinion of, the, of, of all the stuff. And it's years later, right? Well, the opinions do change over time because you start realizing, hey, there is something a little bit better or, hey, there, you know, this this change makes it a little bit easier for me to ride. So um, here's here's the thing I'm going to tell you. If you ever watch a Russ is Right video, take a look at the date. Yeah, it'll tell you when a date it was created or actually uploaded. I don't know which one it is when it was published, <laughs> probably when it was first originally published. And if you're looking at a video that's like four years old from me, um, yeah, <laughs> or three years old for me, whatever. Um, at the time, that was my opinion, but it may not be my opinion today. You really have to kind of see, you know, the progression of, of um, I guess the progression of people who use uh, things and, and if their opinion has changed over time. So yeah, some of my opinions have changed over time because I got to try other things and, uh, and I started realizing certain things. So, you know, the whole thing is, is this whole thing with the e-bikes, it's like, like I always say, it's a journey, right? It's a, it's, a, it's a learning experience as you go through the experience. And uh, as, as bikes change, your opinions change. As your experience changes, your opinion changes, okay? So, uh, yeah, I, I appreciate, too, for him uh, watching the older video and... Um, um, yeah, you guys should watch some of the older videos too. You kind of get an idea how, how my thought patterns were back then and what they are today. So today I would say, um, I'm more open to different styles of bikes. I'm more open to different types of bikes. Uh, currently, you know, we were talking about torque sensors versus cadence sensors. I don't think that's changed too much either between the two. I tend to like the cadence sensor because, um, I don't have the leg strength. Uh, needed sometimes to, to do a good ride with a torque sensor. <laughs> but I but I adapt and I use the torque sensor bikes because I know a lot of the bikes coming out now are torque sensor bikes. I got to learn to do it. Plus, uh, you know, with my health issues going on right now, it's better that I try to, to pedal more uh, than I had been in the past. Now, that doesn't mean when you watch my videos today that I'm going to be pedaling while I'm doing my videos because chances are I won't. <laughs> and that's, that's only because... Um, you know, I know that when I'm pedaling, I do tend to, uh, uh, I tend to breathe real heavily. And when that happens, it doesn't sound good on the video. And it's just not fun for me to make the videos. And it's not fun for you to hear it. <laughs> so usually when I'm making the videos, I am usually throttling most of the time. Uh, although you'll see me kick in every now and then now. So um, yeah, I'll, 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 th I'll throttle for a certain amount of time. And then I'll pedal for a little bit. And then I'll throttle a bunch more. Okay. So, uh, so that's, that's the deal with that. So I just wanted to bring up to you, to your attention that, um, that, uh, opinions do change over time and your, uh, your experience levels change as you ride more. Now, if you're a brand new rider and this is the first time you've gotten a B bike, enjoy the bike that you have. Okay. Don't, don't go looking and say, Oh, that was a mistake. I should have bought something else. You know, get used to what you have and, and ride it for a while. And then, you know, a year or two later, if you decide, Hey, you know, I think maybe I've outgrown this now. I'm going to look at what else there is on the market. Believe me, by the time you start looking in a year or two later, there's going to be other things that they have that, um, you know, you can, oh, wow, you know, if I would have bought it back then, it would have cost me more money. 
Yeah, the e-bike world is getting more and more competitive, and so competition, of course, drives pricings down and features up. So we're all benefiting from that. So anyways, that's about all I really want to mention is uh, things do change over time. Opinions do change over time. Anyways, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. I'll talk to you guys next time.